test, test, one, two, test, test. This is the week of birthdays at the church. Uh, on the 14th, Brooke Henwood has a birthday. And on the 17th, Ruth Thompson and Jay Lehman have birthdays. And our Bob has a big birthday coming on the 18th. And next Sunday is Ruth Smith 
and Marilyn Mullen. Yay. <laughs> Uh, next Sunday is a gathering after church um, to celebrate Bob's Bob's. <laughs> I'm like, wait, it's been canceled. <laughs> uh, Bob's birthday from one until four, so not literally right after church. <laughs> A one until three, excuse me. One until we get kicked out. <laughs> uh, session meets today after church. And are there any other announcements? Let's turn our hearts and minds to worship and please rise if you are able and join in the call to worship. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. We come into the presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto you with our songs of praise. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For we are your people, the flock that you shepherd. We will know of your power as we listen for your voice. Let us worship God. The opening hymn this morning is number 81, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. be seated. Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. I do have an announcement. Um, Katie Frazier thanked us all um, for the soup that we donated um, to Inner Church. I, I forgot to count it as I was supposed to, but um, anyway, but she thanked us for that. Many organizations in town had given soup for Super Bowl Sunday efforts. Um, so following on that, I ask you to join me in a, 
You crack me up, Cracker Sunday. They need crackers to hand out with their soup. They have to be sleeves, the kind that come in you know, separate sleeves so they can hand out a sleeve. So for the next two Sundays, you crack me up. Okay, back to why we're here. <laughs> a prayer of confession in unison, if you would. Do not harden our hearts, O God, to the sound of your voice. We confess we don't listen to the word that you send. You give us Jesus, the word of life, in our midst. We confess our delay in obeying the direction he brings. You promise the Holy Spirit, a source of counsel and power. We confess ignoring such guidance since we do not respond. Forgive us our sin and help us through Christ to enter the rest you have promised. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus, we are forgiven. Our first scripture today from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Jesus, Go on ahead of the people and take some elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? And now for some special music. Be Thou Thy Vision is an Irish poem, very, very old, and it was translated into English by Mary Byrne. So it's been around since Matthew was a pup, okay? And um, it's one of the most Celtic hymns we have. So I'm opening that, I'm doing an entire Celtic celebration, okay? You might recognize a couple of these tunes if you're old enough. <laughs> if you're not old enough, I'm sorry, you might.
Our second reading today is from Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have attained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here is the reading of the word. Praise be to God. Let's share the peace with one another. This is the time in our service when we share our joys and concerns. It certainly was nice to uh, the Friday Cafe. Uh, we actually ran out of food this time. So it was, uh, we had, I think we served 51 meals. So that was really nice. And thank you to all of you who make that possible, the cooks and the workers and, and uh, people who work tirelessly to make that happen. Are there other joys or concerns? Are the ones that died. <laughs> you know, they show this in memorial. 
memorial, and 20 years ago, I didn't pay much attention to it, but now those are the people I know, you know, and I always feel really bad. But anyway, um, that's on tonight if you want to watch something unique. Oh, and there's no more red carpet. Why? Probably offended somebody. Let's go to the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Let's go to the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's sing the prayer hymn number 494. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, at Syker, Jesus came to drink from Jacob's well. When your people have felt dry and thirsty, you have led them to streams of your kindness, bringing new life. We've taken the water and set it apart in Christ's name. No, we will never thirst again. Cleansed of our sin and justified by Christ's faith, we receive the promise of your grace. Hear our prayers for all those who thirst today. We lift up Donnie, Sue, Skip, Scott, and Amy. May our arms enfold them and support them through their trials. With our lives attuned to your purpose and will, may we be of some hope to those needing your word. And may it be a word of reconciliation and peace. Trusting in Jesus, who invites us to drink from the well of living water, may we offer that cup to our neighbor in need. Let us join 
in the words that Jesus taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gospel lesson this morning is from John chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. This is a long one. So he came to some a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. They, she said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do not say four months more, then comes the harvest. 
But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Thanks be to God. As we make our way through this morning's gospel lesson, we find several issues addressed. The first one I saw was the prejudice of that time. The people leaving Judea and going to Galilee would go out of their way to avoid going through Samaria. But of course, not Jesus. He and the disciples headed straight north through Samaria. And then the drama of the scripture begins. Jesus, tired and thirsty, sits down at a well that Jacob had given to Joseph. The disciples head off to the town for food. While Jesus is sitting there, a Samaritan woman comes to the well to get water. Jesus asks the woman for a drink of water. Jesus, a Jewish man, is asking a Samaritan woman for a drink of water. The conversation develops and it becomes clear that Jesus knows all about this woman's life. She has had five husbands and is now living with a man that is not her husband. This is another issue. During these times, having five husbands is scandalous and living with a man outside of marriage is shameful. The woman finds it scary that Jesus knows her heart, knows all about her life. When she gets uncomfortable with the revelation of her life, she turns the conversation to religion. Jesus offers the woman living water, but the woman misses the whole point. Jesus doesn't have a bucket and the well is deep. How's he going to give her water? This gives Jesus an opening to reveal more about the living water of which he speaks. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman responds to this by saying, I know that the Messiah is coming. When that one comes, he will declare all things to us. Then Jesus makes the big revelation. I who speak to you am he. The woman heads off to the town to spread the word. The disciples return with food and Jesus continues the lesson. The disciples are urging Jesus to eat the food they have returned with. His response is, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. It's hard to believe that a person wouldn't be changed by this story. Jesus defies the prejudice of the time Jesus forces us to face the truth about who we really are. Jesus reveals 
he is God's son. And of course, as is usual when looking at biblical stories involving Jesus, there is a zinger. There is a lesson for all of us. Never once does Jesus tell this woman to leave the man she lives with. He did not place judgment on her or reprimand her for living an immoral life. He doesn't tell her to clean up her act and then she will be qualified to believe. No, Jesus just reveals to her what she will have if she does believe. She will never thirst again. She will have the living water. As disciples, our job isn't to read people a long list of rules to follow that will get all of us to salvation. Our job isn't to judge anyone's life to determine if they qualify to believe. More simply put, our job isn't to clean the fishbowl. When Jesus called the initial 12 disciples, he called them to be fishers of people. Yes, sometimes we come to the well tired and thirsty, but Jesus is at the well to give us what we need and send us back out to do God's will. God's will, our job, to fish. Sharing the good news and the joy that God brings to our lives. And watch as lives change. Amen. If you all please rise and join in the doxology as the ushers bring forward the morning offering. Accept the offering that we bring as a witness to your spirit. Use what we give so that others may come into your presence with joyful hearts. Amen. The closing hymn this morning is number 719, Come Labor On.
The gift of living water is ours. Go forth and never thirst again. Amen.